Welcome to Bad Gear, the show about the world's most hated audio tools. There are synths that have become synonymous with certain styles. The 303 is the sound of acid, the X7s are the stuff that 80s hits were made of and it is no secret that decaf, dry almond macchiatos and an OP1 go together well. Today we are going to talk about the Roland JP8080, this 1998 virtual analog pioneer and its keyboard sibling are to late 90s dance music in general and trance in particular what insulting people is to Gordon Ramsay. At the core of this phenomenon is the Super Soul waveform, which allows for synth tones many people love for their bright, buzzy and oftentimes artificial sounding qualities while others hate them for the exact same reasons. At the first glance the 8080 is ticking all the we're not in Walker country anymore boxes. 30 full sized knobs. faders for the filter and the envelopes, buttons that can be used as an emergency keyboard and two, yes two, five pin MIDI inputs. Compared to the first born keyboard version this rack slash desktop synth can be considered an upgrade. Full metal enclosure, 10 instead of 8 voices of polyphony, the foundation of this engine are two oscillators, one of which features not only the infamous super song, but also more conventional waveforms including a rectangle with PWM, filtered noise and a pleasantly chaotic feedback oscillator. Oscillator 2 is fully tweakable as well and has a huge tuning range. It can be substituted with an external audio source. There's ring and cross modulation and the oscillators can be synced. The filter is surprisingly smooth. Until you touch the very 90s VA synth like resonance. Another testament to the time of the instrument's release are the envelopes, which let you choose between punchy and click free. I do like the faders and dedicated pitch envelope. One of the two LFOs has a strong focus on mod wheel duties. I've read quite a few complaints about the thin sound of the JP8080, especially when compared to vintage analogs or other VAs of the time. You can, however, thicken your tone with a shelving EQ, delay and modulation FX. I've heard thicker unison, but portamento and solo legato modes are much appreciated. The JP is loaded with a vast amount of presets ranging from respectable VA versions of 80s classics to the aforementioned 90s rave monsters and plenty of usable sounds in between. There's an arpeggiator, a pattern sequencer, and I honestly didn't know that Roland implemented motion control years before the release of Cork's Electribes. You 
can save 128 sounds to the internal memory and create performances allowing for layers, splits and independent MIDI control of two patches. Tweaking performances doesn't affect the regular banks. Nice! Once you run out of internal memory slots, you can either send backups via MIDI dump or try to find one of the super rare and expensive 5 volt smart medias with a maximum size of 4 MB. Speaking of rare and expensive, prices for the JP8080 in good condition are kind of surreal. Vienna DJ and producer legend Ken Hayakawa drove all the way to Bad Ischl to get the synth from his friend Ingo, thanks to both of them. Without Without a doubt, the JP8080 had a huge impact on late 90s electronic music. Is it capable of producing sounds outside of these genres and are its quirks and crazy used prices a deal breaker? You have already heard the JP in today's intro tune. Sorry, but I couldn't resist the urge of using a classic Super Saw lead. Let's dial it down a little for the first jam. what I call 90s VA tone. However, the clicky envelopes might put some people off and I would have preferred a second pair of stereo outs for multi-timbral use. In spite of the hands-on interface, the patches we just heard didn't respond so well even to minor modifications. I wanna know how tweakable the JP actually is. and heavily modulated sounds work really well and pads cut through the mix with ease. The FX section is basic but does the trick. Time to go all in on the retro rave nostalgia with a one-way ticket to Planet Trans ideal for late night car rides, retro gaming and epic space battles. While using the JP8080, I went through three phases. Initial endorphin rush caused by all the iconic sounds, then substantial frustration because of the quirks and oddities when actually using it and finally relief when placing it in a real mix. Although the synth is certainly one of the last big and innovative Roland instruments, its overall sound has a somewhat plasticky sheen to it and it depends on where in the 90s you set your personal this is when Roland truly started to suck year whether you like that or not. It is surprisingly easy to use the JP8080 outside of a vintage dance context. I just don't want to. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Feel free to like, subscribe, become a patron and leave a comment what other kind of gear you would like to see and hear on the show. 